He used to play the drums. Well, he still does play the drums, too, but he used to play them more, including with members of the Black Crows. And they played with, uh, with uh, members of Led Zeppelin. So he just says he's just like one call sheet away from Led Zeppelin. Everyone, please welcome Ryan. All right, hey guys, I'm Ryan Klein. I'm a data scientist at Continental Resources in Oklahoma City. Uh, we're an energy company. Um, so right in the middle of the tornado alley, so feel free to come visit and let that be an enticement. Um, so I, uh, title of my talk is Using Plumber to Expose Malls in Excel. So I know nobody bought a ticket or traveled from who knows where to come hear about Excel. But consider this more of a gentle intro to the plumber package that just happens to end up in an Excel template. So first we're going to talk about the use case that led to this uh, discovery, and then we're going to walk through kind of a live demo, so you know what could possibly go wrong. Um, use case, continental resources. Uh, we're an energy company. We have about 6,000 wells that we operate, which means we're in charge of everything. Um, on average, it's about $8 million just to get things set up before we see any kind of return on investment. That's $8 million, give or take, a couple hundred thousand dollars in there. So in my position, I'm in IT, so I get to work with people from all across our uh, company. So there's accountants, there's guys in the field, there's engineers. So again, with $8 million investment, we want to make sure when we set these wells up, they are the most finely tuned things we can get because it's a pretty big check to write with nothing comes back on your investment. So working with our engineers, we developed a model that will say, given these parameters, what can we realistically expect to get back given what we can control? Now, there's some things we can't control, geology, um, things, you know, just things that we, have no, we can't turn any knobs on. But there's a lot of operating parameters we can, and of course, with those operating parameters comes a cost per whatever unit of measurement you want to consider. So, and there's other things like how close is this well to another well? What's the optimal distance and spacing? What order should we finish these wells in? All those affect performance. So, working with our petroleum engineers, we created this awesome shiny R tool. So, basically, it's 50 input fields, which is a lot to hand enter. So that's where you see the awesome map there. They can select a well similar to where they think this new one's going to be. It'll drop that data in. They can go through and manipulate a few things. They can tweak a few fields. And it will spit out a prediction. And so great, cool, awesome. We love it. But after a while, I go back and you know, follow up with the users. And I find out, well, what we're doing really is we're running one of these, we're putting it to Excel, we're changing a few things, putting it to Excel, put, carry on to ad nauseum. So I thought, okay, well, we can expand this shiny R tool. You know, we can expand grid, we can put in a range of values that can create new data, do predictions. And they're like, yeah, that's cool, but we still want it in Excel. So, all right, we'll, we'll, we're going to meet the user where they're at. You know, I'm not going to try and change the way they do business. Because um, basically they said, besides the mapping feature, which is cool, we just want to be able to select a well and permutate it and get results back. So of course, the answer to that, Excel, yay. <laughs> now I know there's, a, there's, a, there's an image that we can sometimes have of Excel. Um, but this is not about the tool. It's just about getting the user what they need so they can do their jobs and we can all make money and go home at the end of the day. And again, everyone, mostly everyone, has some sort of skills at Excel. I know mine were greatly diminished for a while until I was forced to use Excel again. Um, and for lack of anything else, it's the most widely used BI tool in existence, even after AI destroys everything, and the smoke clears. Someone will have an Excel sheet that the macro stopped working on. <laughs> and the other bonus of Excel is all the built-in functionality, right? There's filtering. There's stuff. Everyone knows what Excel can do. And again, this is about not what I think is right or best, but slow walking the users to something else. So if they want to use Excel for now, we'll give them something they can use. And the other benefit for our group is once they get these permutated values, they, can, they do further financial analysis. Um, they have to put together submissions and 
everything else. So this is just a way for them to get a bunch of results at one clip and look through them and find, okay, this return may be best, but it's going to cost the most, and we can do it for this much. It may not return as much. Maybe the life of the well gets extended. So all this lets them use their tribal knowledge to further these projects. And so the end result I ended up with was this very green and white spreadsheet that has all their fields in there. So the top left chart is the input fields, and the bottom right are we have about 13, 14 outputs, along with an outlier score, which I'll get into here in a second. So the benefit is this upper left, the well name search, they can pick a well. They know their wells enough because they work in a specific area. They can pick a well similar to what they're looking to do. It will go out to our warehouse, pull the data back. They can copy it down how many times. They can go through and tweak one field. They can tweak two fields. And I've written it where it's dynamic, so they can run 100,000 iterations. It might take a weekend, but they can run as many as they want and get those results back. So we're going to actually jump into R to talk about how I did this in Plumber. And I am by no means an expert in Plumber, but this should be a soft intro enough where if you're interested, you can Google things. So for this demo, I found a data set out there that is not pertinent to anything. It's uh, the 2012-2013 house prices in Taiwan. So if anyone's interested in a half-baked model, come see me after this, and I'll make you a good deal. But so what I did, I just ran a random forest on the data, a uh, random forest regression, and I saved that model off. So this is somewhere local just for this conference. If this was on our network, it's safe somewhere else where if it, they're on our network anywhere, they can access this, this API call. So that's my model, and it's built in tidy models, so you can use all the cool functionality in tidy models, and just basically you're passing in, this is your new data, you're passing to it to get back results. Now something I like to incorporate is something Max talked about in last year's conference is isolation forest. As our users go through and change values and change values, they may get a little left of center on some of these collections of values. With 50 fields, there's, you could get some very outlier points, but still get results. And they may look at that and go, oh, if we just do this, we're going to make X amount of dollars. But the model may not have been trained on that, so it's more extrapolation than interpretation. So using this outlier score gives them an idea of how trustworthy a, the data set is totally removed from your, our target variables. So this is just running isolation forest. And then I actually, if anyone's unfamiliar, basically the higher the score, the more outlier or extreme it is. So what I do is I train this against our entire data set, and I, I normalize it 0 to 1. So the, the use, it makes more sense to the user. If it's closer to 1, it's more iffy. If it's closer to 0, it's more what the model has been trained on. So all of this information gets saved out somewhere that this API can access. So once that's done, that's the, the modeling part. So here's the Plumber file. If anyone's ever used Plumber, good. If you haven't, then welcome, friends. I haven't either till this. So creating a new Plumber file, it gives you a nice template, and it makes it pretty easy to input what you need to input. So you get your API title, which is whatever this data set was called, I copied and pasted uh, API description, which is a super accurate and well thought out model for the R conference. And then here are the, the fields that were included in this data set. There's house age, there's the distance to the nearest station, there's the number of convenience stores, and latitude and longitude. So these are all the parameters I'm worried about passing into this API. Function is kind of what's the default value if they don't, if nothing gets passed in, what can we set there? So this is something you can handle on the front end, whether you're using, you know, Excel or Tableau or Power BI, whatever you want, it, whatever your main interface is. You could do error handling on the front end, data, data value validation on the front end, or try and catch it in here. So here's my note to add data validations here. I didn't get too far into it. So I know when I pass in this data, it's going to be a big, long string concatenated together with a delimiter of the pipe. So as it comes in from the API call, I'm splitting it, unlisting it, and then I'm actually making sure it's the right data type. So you could do factors. You just want to make sure that whatever your model is trained on, the data comes in and gets converted to that same type. 
So here it's just handling all those values coming in. And then so they come in as individual columns. Then I unlist them and then smush them back together. And that's the industry term is smush them back together. And then lastly, I'm just using that. It's my new data frame, right? So that's what I'm predicting on. So model predict. It's that data. It's the data that's been passed in. It's been created to a data frame. It's predicting it. We're getting the results. And that same, right after that, I'm using that same data frame to get my outlier score, which I'm also then normalizing to a scale from 0 to 1 so that it makes more sense to the user because trying to explain outlier score to an engineer is time well spent. <laughs> Lastly, I have my model output and I have my outlier prediction. And so those get p pasted together and then returned. So this is what... API calls this, it does all this stuff, and it returns basically a single column. In my case, it's, it's uh, delimited by my colon. Now, that's the whole function of this plumber file at the bottom is where it's actually reading in the model and the data frame and anything else you, you can think of you want to use in your API call. So here it's reading in the model, the outlier model, and this is a data frame that just has the min-max scores from the the uh, isolation forest, so we, we, can, we can normalize them better. So now the plumber file is complete. It's ready to go. And so if you were just to come out here and hit run API, and this here's where the live demo part starts, it will run and it'll give you a, a link. And every time you run this API, it's going to change this port which is an issue if you have something static like an Excel sheet because you have to hard code in something. So there's a neat little piece of code you can run. You call your plumber file and you just say this PR underscore run port 8000, whatever number you want to pick. And that way every time this runs, it's going to be at the same port. So if something happens in your system and things shut down and start back up, everything will still be pointed in the right direction. So at this point, everything's ready to go. It's set up we're ready to actually do something cool with it. So here is my, this is my fake Excel template. I'm doing this for this demo. Obviously, I'm a graphic designer because this is a work of art. But <laughs> so again, I've made this where it's, it's variable in length, so you don't have to say, you can have to do five records, 10 records. To do that, you have to do some VBA. So you know, yay, more programming. But there's a way to set this up where Again, you can just feed it five records, 10 records, and hit a few buttons. Um, so just to show you how it works, I'm going to first kick off the plumber file with my handy dandy little piece of script here. And so this would be running somewhere in our network. Our system admin sets this up, and it's running, and I never have to see it again. So now I can come out, and I can put in whatever I want. So let's say I'm worried about a house age that's five years old, the distance to train is 100. There's two convenience stores somewhere and latitude and longitude. You see I have a bunch of dummy data in here. So at this point, if I hit run, it's taking this data, passing it to the API, and returning the prediction and the outlier score. Now, again, you can go in and make it look pretty and do whatever you want to. This was just to get something out here. But maybe I'm curious about, OK, what if it's five years old, it's closer to the train to inconvenience stores? So this allows them to quickly permutate through these, and you can see how the prediction kind of changed and the outlier score kind of changed. So this is a way for them to go in, and they can use all the drag and drop of Excel to change things. They can put formulas in. They can do all that kind of fun stuff. And they can run this fairly quickly and get back results. So again, looking at the outlier score, like 0.61 is getting higher, so that tells me that this combination of fields is something that the model hasn't seen. In our case, either that tells our engineers that this is not really physically feasible, or on the other hand, it could be something, hey, maybe this is some space we need to go explore. Maybe we need to run a test using these parameters to see if there's returns that we haven't ever thought about before. So, and then the other, I guess, benefit of Excel is that you can add in whatever you want to to make this a one-stop shop for your users. These field names are horribly shaded to kind of show variables of importance. So getting that out of R is very easy. So the darker the color, the more important that variable is for this random forest model. So distance to trains, most important, latitude, second, longitude, house age, think number of convenience stores. 
you could add in any kind of chart you wanted. Um, you could do PDPs, you could put in SHAP, whatever you wanted to put in to help them get more out of this tool. Um, the other thing to add is on the back end, when I hit run, it's going through each of these columns and it's making these named cells in Excel. So this, for Excel specifically, this is important because you have to have something that looks like this when you set up your connection. You go to data, queries and connections. And so basically you can see it's going through, it's finding that name cell, setting a variable to it, and then it's creating this string down here, this source equals JSON dot document. It's pasting all that together and making the call. So when it comes back, again, it's a single field. In my case, it has 14 colons in it. These other steps down here, just split them out, make sure the, the data type's correct, it renames things, and sp spits it out into Excel. So that is the magic of using an API with R with Excel. Um, of course, there's a few gotchas, because there's always a gotcha. Using Power Query in Excel has a character limit, which I found the hard way. So depending how wide your data frame is or how deep it is, it's going to hit the ceiling about 2,000 characters. In that case, I had to write some more VBA yay, code that would kind of handle it in batches going down. So it would make a call for like 10 records, return it, go down the next 10, return it, et cetera, et cetera. And you want to make sure that your port is standardized, like I said before. So that way, if something shuts down and opens back up, your Excel template will continue to, continue to run because it's pointed to whatever you've set it to. So again, this is not to say, you know, hey, everyone go do this in Excel, but hopefully this gives you an idea how you can use Plumber in API calls to make the cool stuff you're doing in R get it to the users. You know, we can schedule jobs, we can do all that, but for ad hoc things like this, this gives the power to our users they can run it, they can get it out, they can do whatever they want to with it. So, again, I hope this will give you some ideas going forward. Um, if you have any questions, come find me afterwards. I'll tell you what I know. Otherwise, I appreciate everyone listening and enjoy the conference. <laughs>